This conference has been an eye-opener. The way that it's been set up, everyone has been able to speak, which I think has been great. Information together for our website, writing our reviews, our opinion pieces, and then we actually launched our activity. My name, Lemen, in Amharic, it means the question why. Why? How could I not be a poet with a name like why? For the first time, a venue was created at which publishers and writers have interacted and looked not only at the past, because writing normally seems to direct thoughts to the past, but also of the present and the future. You went the place of the traditional mainstream publisher in this contemporary publishing trends in Africa. The traditional publisher is still needed, right? So I think we need to think about the relationship between the textual form and the oral and the performance. The contemporary is one of the few places where, as Africans, we can really return to voice. And the reason why I'm into publishing is because I'm interested in the archive. Not archive as a relic of the past, but archive as an opportunity to create something for the future. During the session um, around uh, DIY publishing narratives, we're talking about some of the reasons that influenced our decisions to go ahead and, you know, sort of take up the mantle and try to find solutions for um, publishing concerns. You know, we don't have a lot of um, avenues for writers to get their work out there. Um, this is really exciting because this is kind of looking at grassroots level initiatives, individual led initiatives and how they relate to the bigger picture, the wider umbrella of you know publishing, engagement and, um, and kind of distribution as well and um, something that really came up quite a lot was the power of social media. I know a lot of people kind of get a bit freaked out and a bit um, unnerved by it but Definitely it came through that a lot of people are using it and it is a really great way to get the word out there and to get people excited. Um, I know in a, my own kind of experience, social media has been key, certainly in the UK, with finding new audiences, spreading the word and um, yeah, just getting our word out there as well. It is my first time to come to the Uganda International Human Writers Conference and um, it's very important to have this conference because women's voices for long have not been given a platform to flourish. Uh, it's been a privilege being at this third Uganda International Writers Conference. I think what I've found amazing about it is the way it has brought together both scholars and practitioners in the field, in the same industry. So we've been able to look at the research by the academicians and look at what the practitioners are saying is actually on ground and come up with real practical solutions that we can employ in our industry. And everything that I've learned at this conference really has given me the confidence to do what I can to advance Uganda's publishing industry. What I, one of the things I like about the conference is the it's a writers' conference and it has included all the different forms of writing you can think about. So it's not just books, poetry, but also the performance. It's, it's, it's a conference that has returned us to the performative element of writing, that we need to think about writing both in terms of textual, but also as performative. So the conference so far has been great. I've really enjoyed all the conversations. I'm really actually pleased and excited by how often language has come into the discussion. Often language isn't even mentioned, it's just taken for granted that everyone means English. And um, I find this sometimes a bit problematic, but it's wonderful how often it's come up in conversation and how people have really tried to interrogate um, language. Um, if anything, you know, I think there should be more discussion of language, but actual practical realities of what can be done in languages, not kind of just pontificating on, oh, it should be this or oh it should be this but actually real real talk about like literacy and and how that relates to literature. I, I really enjoyed listening to Bibi who has been um, Bibi Bakari Yusuf who has been in this business for a long time. She's done it for about 10 years with Cassava Republic 
who's oppressed is only two years now. So it's always important to learn from those who have actually been on the journey much longer than you have. You know, I, w I was concerned, you know, is this going to work? But Bibi just showed us that actually this is something that can work. And then she also drove the point home about, you know, creating this archive. As publishers, we don't think that we're actually creating an archive. We just think we're creating, uh, you know, a lot of work, putting it out there. So she drove the point home about one, the need to create an archive, but also the power that the archive, that archive will have in telling one our stories, in uh, passing this on to, you know, the newer generations that are going to come. So for me, that was, you know, something that justified why I'm doing this today, the importance of the work that I'm doing um, with Who's Press in Rwanda. What constitutes a publication in the performing arts? And personally, saying that I care about the book publication for me does not render the production publication useless. I want to talk about release. Um, I come from the newspaper and the blogging background. And I find like, um, I think all newspapers decided that they are trouble. And a lot of them are cutting space for the arts. And I've proved everything that I'm telling you now is true. I've spent all of my adult life making documentary evidence, because all family is is a set of documentary makers shooting one scene and then arguing over it in the editing suite. There is a bit of a conservative element sticking to the traditional among us writers, among us uh, academic institutions. We've stuck to the pedagogy of we, we create, we teach, and we've not gotten down to the community that requires this information. I think when we speak of professionalism that you asked of, it starts with our schools. Makaria, why don't you audition people to come into your school? It has been a, a meeting ground of minds, of like minds, and of young writers from various parts of Africa, as well as the African diaspora. And uh, if these kind of meetings continue to take place, I believe African literature will finally become of age. The conference has been run so well, I don't, I wouldn't even have any new recommendations for what else could be done at the conference, but I hope to see results. We've talked a lot about things that we can do in the industry. I want to see us next year when we come back to be talking about what we have done. You know, last year, we talked about how we can convert books into film, how we can you know, have more reviews out there. I want us to come next year and say, you know what, we actually have a bigger number of literary critics and reviewers. We have more books out there. The publishers who had just a few books have more products out on the market. I just hope that we really have results to show next year. And it's very difficult for me to sort of venture out into what are the recommendations because I feel like you've really got it right in terms of the numbers, um, so the people who get to attend, um, in terms of um, you know the uh, managing resources, in terms of organizing um, the conference around a certain theme whereby we're all engaging in a certain in, 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 um, in a conversation. There's one pretty much one conversation going on with different perspectives as opposed to very many conversations going on with too many perspectives so you leave with nothing. I feel like I've actually left with a lot, which is quite different from a lot of other conferences that you attend um, you know, across the continent or even outside of the continent around literary um, initi uh, initiatives. So I think that, I mean, if I were to say, the only recommendation I might have is could you do it every year as opposed to every two years because it's, it's, it's really important. And would you be willing to reconsider venue? Would you consider doing it in, in, in you know, Kigali, for example? Um, and just taking the resources that you have here, um, the organizing capacity and all of that to, to these new spaces and engage with the, with the audiences there.